Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this video around the world right now. My name is Andrei Esichuk and I am an Adobe Analytics consultant. I welcome you to the fourth online training on Adobe Analytics Analysis Workspace. Today we'll talk about growth rates, why they are so important and how to build them in Analysis Workspace. Let's get started. When I start working with my clients, I often see a problem. Senior managers do not get the data they would like to get from Adobe Analytics. Instead of that, they are sent different reports prepared in Microsoft Excel, in different BI systems, in PowerPoint presentations, but they usually never get access to Adobe Analytics because this tool seems to be too complicated for them and they actually don't know where to find the KPIs, the metrics that they would like to track. So today I'm going to present you a part, a fragment of my concept which I call Business Health Dashboard. This is a set of KPIs that are very important for senior managers, for business development managers, for sales managers, for head of digital, etc. And today you will get to know how to build that. And we will start with the business health dashboard, which is showing us month over month trend for growth rate. What we have here, we have a trend line for unique visitors. And this is just an example of the metric that you can use in your own project. It's very important to show a trend line, to show how our business performs month over month. Next one, which is even more important, is to show the growth. So how to read that? Uh, we have the trend line for the last seven months. And the last month is March. The first column, the right column in this chart with growth rates shows us the growth rate for March in March. March versus February. Then the next column to the left is showing us the growth rate of February when we compare February versus January, etc. So as you can see, uh, we have in the second graph uh, the bars that are uh, showing us negative growth rate. And this is very helpful for those who will be working with that because on the left hand side you can see, okay, we have a traffic on the side, we have a drop in October, but afterwards is more or less stable and probably you do not realize uh, how critical it is to have such a trend. But when you look on the right, you can see that last six months you had a negative growth rate. It seems something is not working at all if you see a negative growth rate for the last six months. And today I'm going to show you how to build that, how to build this type of visualization that I see is very important, is very critical for uh, business managers. And in addition to that, I also provide month over month growth rate. Um, so minus 7% is for March last month. So last month we showed a minus 7% growth and I also show um, last month growth versus last month previous year. So instead of looking only on this year where we see a negative trend, we also can recognize that in comparison to the last year, we had a significant growth. It's almost 90% in the same month in March. But it was uh, a year ago. It's good to know it. Our business is growing year over year, but at the same time we have a problem with the last six months and minus 7% last month. This is the overview of this. Then what we have here is pretty much the same visualization but in a table format. So here we have again uh, six months uh, growth rates and also a last month year over year growth. So probably it's uh, more convenient for you if you want to integrate this type of visualization into your project. So probably it makes sense to have a small table rather than a number of different visualizations. So this depends on your preferences. And finally, we have three tables. The first three of even four visualizations are built on and we will also 
today we'll uh, learn how to build them. Um, now let's get started. So first what I want you to know is if you want to build these visualizations you will need to work with custom date ranges, with segments and with metrics with advanced metrics and this is ideal for our training before in the previous three trainings we learned how to use basic uh, functionalities of analysis workspace and today we'll have, we'll have a great progress towards becoming a pro in analysis workspace. The very first step we will need to do is to create custom date ranges and in our case when we talk about monthly uh, growth rates, we will have to create seven or even more uh, custom date ranges and you can recognize them in uh, the list below and my naming convention is the following MA stands for a month ago, so one month ago, two months ago, three months ago, etc. and this is uh, for one month ago last year this is exactly what you can see on the right as 89%. And we will need to create that. So let's start with uh, one month ago, how to create this date range. Go to new and click on the create date range and you will have this type of dialog. Click on the date range and in this dialog click on the rolling monthly and here we will need to configure the date range. First we will start with the current month, then we will select minus and we will select minus one month. And you can see here that now being in April our date range starts from March the 1st. And then we will need to set the end date for our custom date range and we will need to again start from the current month and then click minus and again minus one month. And now we can see that our custom date range includes days from 1st of March till 31st of March, so last month. And basically this is enough to create the first date range, then you will need to repeat it and select two months ago and this will create the date range of uh, February 2018 and you will need to repeat it again and again. When you will be creating a date range for last month, uh, last year, you will need to select here minus 13 months. And you can see in this case this will be March last year. So by doing this you will create date ranges that I showed you in my project. When you create these date ranges the next step will be to create segments. For each date range you will need to create a separate segment. To do that um, you will need to go to... I will show you first that I'm using pretty much the same naming convention. I just have a prefix time so that I will always know that if I'm looking for a segment that is built uh, based on my date range, I will need to look for time. This is my name and convention, you may have another one. And then I just repeat the name of my date range. And now let's have a look how to create them. You can click new and create segment. And in this case uh, we will need to find our date ranges on the left. So for example one month ago I just drag and drop in the definitions area and this is it, this is enough, then you can name your segment and repeat the same steps for all the custom date ranges that you've created. And by doing this you will have your segments. The third and the last step is to create custom metrics. And let me show you that again I'm using pretty much the same naming convention. Again, uh, one month ago, three months ago, four months ago and UVG stands for Unique Visitors Growth. And now let's see what these metrics are. So if I click on the eye icon, I will quickly get 
the formula for that metric. And you can see that we get unique visitors from uh, March last month divided by unique visitors of the previous month, in this case this will be February, and then deduct 1 and convert it into percent. Now let me show you how to create it from scratch. Go to new create metric and here we have definitions area and I will click on add segment and I will look for the segment that I've created. So this will be time one month ago. Then I will add the unique visitors metric inside that segment and this will give me number of unique visitors last month or one month ago which is in our case March. Then I will add another segment and again add for my time segments and now I will select two months ago and again add unique visitors. So this formal so far is the following. I will need to get unique visitors last month, March, and divided by the unique visitors in the previous month. In our case, this will be February. And then I will need to also deduct one. I will choose static number. We'll set um, to minus and we'll enter one. And finally, I will need to change the format of the metric to show me uh, percent. And now you can see minus 7%. And this is exactly what we had in our table just a moment ago. And this will show me the growth rate for, yeah, sorry, in uh, the last month. Sorry, I've broken the metric, so we'll restore it. So this is the right formula. Then you will need to repeat the same steps. And when you need to create the growth rate uh, for February, there will be time 2 MA divided by time 3 MA. And as for the rest, this will be absolutely the same. Unique visitors in both cases. And finally, minus 1 to get the growth rate. So repeat the same steps. And you will get a set of these metrics. Again, I will show you, for example, how it looks for um, two months ago. Now, when we have all these metrics, we will need to add them into the, this table. And this will show you the growth rates month over month. And uh, you will also have um, last month this year versus the same month but last year. Then, I also added a table where I can see number of unique visitors for the last seven months. And this table I use for this trend visualization. So I can see how many unique visitors came to my site during the last seven months. And then you will need to create another table and you will need to use your custom metrics as dimensions in that table. Not dimensional segment but metrics and this will show you the table like you see on the screen and this is uh, the time when I need to explain why I chose the naming convention that starts from the number one month ago, two months ago, three months ago, etc. This is because I want to order this table by this type of custom metrics. And in order to order them, to sort them, I will need to use a number as a prefix. In this case, I can quickly order this uh, this way or another way. And this is exactly how these values will appear in this bar chart. So now they're um, ordered accurately. So seven, uh, sorry, six months ago, and this is one month ago. And uh, this is how it works. Finally, I also added a table with uh, last month and last month but uh, previous year and uh, linked these cells with these visualizations that I showed you in the third episode of uh, 
online trainings on analyst analysis workspace. You can see that they are locked, so I can see uh, the same numbers whenever I click in the table. So they do not change, which is good. And now you see all these charts and you can also recognize that in the first two tables I'm using conditional formatting and a few words about that. Uh, if you want to enable this, you will need to click on the gear icon and set the box, uh, actually radio button, next to conditional formatting. And in this case, these numbers or cells will be colored. The green color will be uh, used in the cell with the maximum number and the red color will be used for the cells with the lowest numbers. And in between the color will be close to orange. And this is good because you can see in which months you had a good performance or best performance and which months you had the worst performance. In the second table we have also conditional formatting enabled, but in this case this is working slightly different. Every time when you have a negative growth you should color these cells with red, so this is a good indicator that something bad happened, and when it's a positive growth you want to color this with green. And if this is a zero growth, um, this will be again an orange color. In our case, since we have uh, all the months with a negative growth, all of them are colored with red. But uh, the idea how you should uh, apply this conditional formatting is the following. You should select custom and you need to select uh, upper limit or set the upper limit to 1% or more and lower limit um, if uh, your number is less than uh, 1%, minus 1%, then it should be colored red and between it will be orange. And if you do that, let's have a look at the next panel where we compare last 30 days with 30 days before, before, before. But very quickly, you can see here that when you have a positive growth, the cell is colored with the green color, which is a good indicator that this is good. And again, when there is a negative growth, those cells are colored with red. So this is what you need to do. This is the tip uh, how you should work with the conditional formatting. And now a few words about the next um, part of uh, visualizations under uh, the next panel, we have a uh, comparison of 30 last 30 days with 30 days before and 30 days before, etc. And it works pretty much the same. And this is a better one because when we work with uh, uh, just month over month, uh, we start looking at the data as of previous month. And for example, if today would be April 20, then we would understand how we perform within this month. And if you need a more regular updates about your performance, you may want to add another type of uh, date ranges. In this case, uh, it shows me last 30 days. So if today is the 1st of April, this is actually is showing me the date range of, um, I think, March, uh, 2nd March till uh, 31st of March, so last 30 days. And I can quickly recognize whether I am currently performing better or worse. And you can see that in this case, with this type of dashboard, we also see a negative trend by unique visitors. And actually, we had one date range where we had a positive growth rate. And our idea is to find out what was good during that uh, date range, what helped us to get a positive performance 
uh, in our traffic metrics. As for the rest, this is pretty much the same. Another difference here is that instead of having this align chart, we have a bar chart. And this is because we've built the table in a slightly different way. Since now we compare uh, last 30 days versus 30 days before, we had to use segments in this table instead of uh, months dimension. And again, our naming convention helped us to order these segments in the right way. And this is another tip that uh, when you build the segments also think about how you afterwards will have the segments in the table, whether you will need to order them, and if so, you will need to think about how to name that. In my case, I'm using numbers, one, two, three, etc. Hope uh, this is uh, clear and this makes sense for you. The basic the, uh, key idea here is to show the growth rate. And now you can tell me, it's okay that uh, now we see a traffic trend and growth rate for traffic, but this is not enough for us, it's not enough for our senior managers, and you'll be absolutely right. The idea here is that this is a framework. Everything that I'm showing you on this training and in the previous trainings is a framework that you can reuse for different purposes. In this training, we only work with unique visitors metric, but since you have your custom date ranges, you have your segments based on those custom uh, date ranges. Now you can choose which metric you want to show on this um, uh, project, on this chart. And you can use unique visitors, you can use revenue if you want to show growth rate uh, on sales. You can show cost, you can show ROI, you can show whatever you want. But the key idea is that you can not only show a trend line, but you can show the growth rates, which is even more important from my perspective. So this is the framework. And now, if you want to have a step deeper uh, and provide this report, let's say, for your you know, digital managers who are responsible for different channels, this is also a great framework for them or for you to help them with that data because you can apply segments. Imagine that you have a digital manager who is responsible for paid search and obviously while this is good to have overall overview about the business, it's also very important to have an overview about their channel and if you apply here a segment for paid search, all of that will become very valuable for those who are responsible for paid search. The same would work for those who are responsible for email, just add another segment or provide a list of different segments on the left hand side in the, uh, in the components um, table, sorry, panel or menu so that they would drag and drop different uh, segments right in the panel and see this for page search, for email, for affiliates, for display, etc. So all of that becomes available just in a single uh, move of a mouse cursor. So hope you've got the idea and this can be used not only for traffic but for any type of metrics. Uh, just help your colleagues and yourself to prepare this framework and then reuse them many times for different purposes. Hope this was helpful and try to show something like that to your senior managers and I'm sure they would like that. They would like the trend line, they would like the growth rate that they can track on a regular basis, weekly, monthly, sometimes even daily if they want to. Try to figure out what type of visualizations will be the most convenient for them. Again, this can be charts, this can be a table, this can be a table with conditional formatting. Just choose one. You don't need to show everything. This is just a training session, but you will need to keep only one or several visualizations that are helpful for those you prepare this dashboard for. And then do not forget that you can also schedule this so your colleagues, your internal customers can get this 
updated every day, every month, every week by email, this will be exported automatically to PDF format and sent over to them. Remember that this is a very powerful technique. And the more data your colleagues will get from Adobe Analytics, the more they will become interested in having something in Adobe Analytics. They will see more and more value. The more data they need you can provide through Adobe Analytics, the more effective analytics will become in your, over, in your organization overall. So they should see the value of Adobe Analytics. And this is very important to show them that, to show them the data they can act on. Um, now it's your turn. Again, this is the training. This is not a lesson. Um, now it's your turn. I want you to practice to build this for health dashboard. Again, we have first the health dashboard where we can compare month over month. The second panel uh, is built pretty much the same, but uh, here we compare last 30 days versus 30 days before versus 30 days before, etc. Build that. Then I want you also to build a panel with a week over week comparison. So similar to months, you compare last week versus a week before versus a week before, etc. And finally, just to have more practice working with analysis workspace to become a real pro, uh, build another panel where you compare last seven days. So last seven days versus seven days before, seven days before, seven days before, and you will have that. I'm, why I'm asking you to build these four type of uh, visual, let's say, uh, panels, because I'm sure that you will face a number of challenges. And this is good because when you face a challenge, you will think about how to uh, build the uh, dashboard that I'm asking you to build. And you will learn more. You will try to probably find an answer on your own question. If you have questions, if you got stuck and you can't understand what to do, how to do, uh, feel free to ask your questions in the comments under this video and I will help you. If you want to get a pro, if you want to be fluent in working in analysis workspace, you will need to do this, believe me. And if you want to get more practice, uh, feel free to sign up for a free online training with me. The link is in the description under this video. So hope this was uh, helpful. Now it's your turn. Build um, health dashboards. If you forget how they should look, just watch this video training again. Uh, pause it and look at the visualizations to remember. So this is it. Thank you very much and uh, see you next time. Bye.